The most important work of your life is the work you do within your soul. This is Home Improvement for the Soul. Hello and welcome to Home Improvement for the Soul. I'm Maddie Cheers and I am very pleased to be here once again with my dear friend and amazing human, Marianne Francisi Chasen, who is a creative arts therapist, mother of four amazingly wonderful children, author of the book Sacred Weave of Mothering and a poet. And I am very, very pleased to continue with our topic from last time, which was all about aging gracefully and aging gratefully. And Marianne developed a wonderful thing that I was privileged enough to be involved in called the HAG Project. And HAG, I really, you know, we had a lot of pushback on the word HAG to begin with. So I really want to turn it over to you to explain why that word is was so important to use and is still so important to use. So good to be here, Maddie, as Thank always. You, as always. <laughs> and um, so the HAG project, the HAG, pro- HAG is kind of a provocative word. Mm-hmm. And it sort of, um, for me, cuts through a lot of the sort of dead language of aging. Yeah. Right. And wisdom keepers or um, kind of moving forward with aging. There is a grit and a connotation of ugliness to the hag. And I think she's really a very misunderstood archetype, part of why I adore her. But um, it gets to that it's not easy. Right. Aging is not easy. No. And there is this um, embrace of the hag within us that can allow us to not bypass the adjustment to, ah, I'm no longer young. Like, wait, time has passed. What's going to happen to me? So... Um, so that's why I've really hung on to it. And there was a lot of pushback because women across the board are like, no, I don't want to look like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> In a way I do. <laughs> like, I don't care. I'll look like a hag. But the hag is also connected with in story, in mythology, with the land. Mm-hmm. So she is the ultimate defender and keeper of the land and she becomes part of the landscape she's the rock she's the mountain she is the one who will not allow man to destroy the land because her sacred duty is to preserve the land for the generations to come exactly so she is not afraid to use her magic, to do whatever she has to do to put uh, people in power in their place of remembering that, of remembering the connection to the land. So if we, we think about home improvement for the soul, the hag, she is looking to help us all to re- connect to the power and beauty of the land. Yes. And our the land is our home. The earth is our home. Mm-hmm. And for women especially and especially the elder women, we are intimately connected with the land. Mm-hmm. So as we grow older, as we move into the wisdom keeper phase because it's really only this culture, this very new culture, this very, you know, we think about, about how long this, this idea, if we're just going to focus on America, so what have we been here, somewhat over 200 years, Mm -hmm. if we're just going to focus on the time since the Industrial Revolution, that it's since that time that we have decided that the act of aging and the wisdom that comes with it is not important. That, that it's more important to be productive, 
We've talked about that. It's more important to give something material to the world. Whereas if you look at other cultures, the whole idea of aging is you're losing the material. You're shedding the looks. You're shedding the skin. One of the symbols of the hag is the snake. Mm. You're shedding. Yes. So that what is revealed is the light beneath. And so we are shining forth. And in the origins of the word hag, it actually has to do with magic. Yes, and holy. And holy, right. It's haggy is holy. Mm -hmm. And so it is coming to the holy land, right? The holy essence of who you are. Right. And that is, it, it is part of part of the trinity right of of creation where there is that in order for there to be unification right there is an affirming force of yes i am aging it is a natural part of the process there is much that i have lost there may be many things i even regret and need to come to terms with it's that kind of reckoning with this life right but affirming that it's happening and acceptance of it and then there is a denying process of the i am not dead yet and right. I don't want to like live dead how do I bring aliveness back to these bones that are now um weak and don't move in the same way and my culture kind of is making me invisible how do I stay visible and those forces coming together allow for this energy of creativity. So the HAG project was really developed with this vision of bringing aging women together in the spirit of that creative whimsy. Yeah. Let's play with the extremes here. Let's go there. Let's read those stories and go deep into our own stories and do it within community. Share the most vulnerable, hidden aspects of our being to the most, you know, whimsical, wonderful, playful aspects of our being and support each other in this process and ultimately find where enchantment lives. So it's a falling in to aging. There is something a little scary about it. Absolutely. So we we fall in love with this sense of eternal that we're part of. So it awakens both our ancestors that have come before us and the generation that's going to come after us and who we are right now and how do we land and how do we start to play and really, really connect deeply with the land. Absolutely. And you know, you know how I feel about rites of passage. And I think that one of the things we do need to bring back are these rites of passage. Mm -hmm. These, these markers that exist throughout our lives that were celebrated by the community that showed when we, when we left childhood and that so you've got the the celebration of reaching puberty you've got the celebration of getting married you've got the celebration of graduating high school in our case or in the old days the celebration of earning your first knife you know there's there's all these celebrations that along the way teach you to let go of things mm-hmm. there's there's you know when a parent if it has to have a gift. I love the knife giving ceremony, you know that, which comes from native traditions all over the world. When the parent is giving the child their first knife or the grandparent is doing that, there's a loss, there's a recognition that, oh, my little boy, my little girl is now going to be more of an adult. They're, they're not going to be that, that little one anymore. I'm mm-hmm. not going to, you know, they're not going to run to me for every little thing. And I've got to make sure that I, I send them off. I don't allow them to run to me for every little thing. You know, there's, 
So along the way, when we have these rites of passage, we get used to the celebration and the grieving. Mm-hmm. So that when we get to that final rite of passage, somebody's death, the death of a loved one, th- which spiritually we look at as the transition into the next beautiful thing that we're going to be but when you get to there you're able to grieve gratefully Mm -hmm. and I do think that probably the most beautiful thing we could contribute is to re-enliven the wisdom keeper ceremony Mm-hmm. The wisdom keeper writes it to recognize at 65 or 60 or whatever age a person feels they need to do it to recognize that this is a wonderful age and also an age where you're giving back. Mm-hmm. You have a responsibility now to the community. But you've got to know what you're giving back, right? Exactly. You have to, again, know what is this essence of what I offer the world? What is my gift? Like, simple. Like, it it could be, wow, I just really can listen well. Or mm-hmm. I know how to tell a story. Like, what is it that's been with me all along that I can give back? But any ceremony, any rites of passage comes with a period of pretty intense preparation. Yes. There is an earning that comes along with that right to cross that threshold. You don't you arrive at the threshold of the ceremony having prepared. Right. And we don't have methods to prepare, Mm-mm. not methods that are going to take us back to help us retrieve. It's really work. What I found with the Hag Progress, it was our first launch, and it was a 13-week kind of course that we did, was that it was really a process of retrieval. Wow. Of parts of ourselves. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, and what was so universal was this especially the retrieval of our maidens as we're all older now we look back on that maiden and how hard we were on ourselves yes as the 20 year old as the 25 year old the 30 year old the new mother just never good enough our body's not good enough not like embarrassed of our choices, Mm -hmm. feeling so much burden to go back and to meet her with love, which is what these series of ceremonies we did was to meet her, to, to love her, marry her, hold her through it, now is preparing the hag to receive the maiden right right to receive the girl that i can now sit with and make so much space for with compassion because i've sat with myself i've done it exactly i have gone through that work and that the the difficult remembering and processing of that so as that work is getting done, it's back to what you're saying of the shedding. Mm-hmm. As those burdens are no longer burdens, but they are now part of your treasures and your medicine. Right. Because what you've suffered and what you've come to understand and have met with with compassion in yourself now becomes part of your medicine bundle to offer to others. Exactly. Exactly. You cannot... You cannot forgive others or be compassionate towards them unless you have forgiven yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that's an old saying, right? You do have to forgive yourself first. You have to understand what that means. And very often the things that we're forgiving ourselves for don't really need forgiveness. I mean, we think they do, Mm -hmm. you know. And certainly there are things we've done. You know, if I look back on my life, there are people I've hurt. There are, you know, choices I've made that are not in my best interest or were not in my best interest. But in, in looking at it from an older perspective, it's it's much easier to be kind to yourself. Yes, because you can say, oh, you know, you only, you were young. Right, 
it makes sense for everything you had gone through up to that in your life that you would make that choice. You didn't have support that you needed. We have that level of understanding that at the core of who we are is goodness. Yes. Right? Like there is the remembrance of that, the return to that. Then it just makes so much more room. It starts to become expansive. And the other part of it is there is a really dangerous kind of loneliness Mm -hmm. that can begin to happen in aging. And the need to be in community and to have the support of others who have gone through a process with you is really very, very important for truly the soul of aging, for the soul to stay shiny. Doesn't mean that, you know, there isn't a lot of alone time. It's, it is sort of like seasonal. There's the winter where you're just in all winter, (laughs) right? You're not doing anything, but there is a community to lean on if you need one. Absolutely. And that, that's something we talked about with Tom Mendelbaum Ben Moshe when we talked about Kabbalah, Mm. is that there is nothing done in terms of elevating humanity the soul, the great soul, the soul of humanity towards the creator, God, the womb of the universe, whatever you want to name this, this source that of sources, whatever you want to call this, Mm -hmm. right? There is no elevating the great soul of humanity to that level without doing it with others. You've got to have, you've got to have one of the beautiful things about Kabbalah is that it teaches the the power of 10. So you sit in groups of 10 people mm. and you discuss these things back and forth. You Why discuss, 10, Maddie? 10 is a sacred number. Mm-hmm. For, much like four is a sacred number for the Plains Indians, three is a sacred number in the Haudenosaunee. The, it has to do with the tree of life, which is also known as the 10 Sephirot. So the these are all sacred numerologies that exist. Actually, they all exist in all spiritual teachings, mm. right? But to sit in a group of people and then discuss back and forth that's where we make the connections and so for somebody who doesn't have a group to find that within your community to be able to sit with older women right Mm -hmm. part of the hag project part of the ultimate goal is to bring it out into the community so that people can start finding it for themselves, building their own community. We talk about that with women's circle, building their own circle of like-hearted people because what we want to do at this, in this day and age is drop into the heart. Yes, it is all about that. And this idea of lightening up, right? Right. So I just know, like from any of the elders that we have the honor of knowing in the Native American community, they are so lighthearted. Mm-hmm. They're sparkly and laughing and playful and childlike, but deeply wise and had gone through so much. Mm-hmm. So I have found that, like having gone through this initiative process of this hand process project, doing some really heavy work and review, life review. I feel lighter because I don't feel, um, I feel more unified. I feel right. more part of just the, the just life. There's not greater divides. I, I work at a behavioral health hospital. So I was walking through the hall and I was walking slowly and I kind of was dressed down. I had a sweatshirt on and I was carrying my keys in my hand. And one of the assistants on the unit starts walking by and he goes, oh my God. He said, I got so scared. I saw you with keys in your hand, but from the back, I thought you were a patient. (laughs) 
and that's like the time I almost got when I was teaching fitness at the at the uh, mental health institute in Maryland, and I didn't I forgot my badge. And they were they were not going to let me out, even though I had the boom box and everything. <laughs> They're like, That's how long it was, boom box, how long ago yes, it was, right? Yes. But the feeling I had, <laughs> and this is this is like the indication of for me of this lightness. I had no offense. I actually mm. felt some kind of good for you joy <laughs> of, and I said to him, I said, oh. Like the veil is very thin, right? Between patient and inpatient and outpatient, right. any one of us can step over that, and yep. we don't know what life has in store. And with this, he then turned to me and he said, "That is so true." Mm-hmm. And he told me a story about a grieving story that he had gone through, where he really his mental health was so deeply impacted. And I'm standing there, and the part of me, the hag that's observing, it's like this is the enchantment. Like, it it opened up. My lighthearted reaction opened up his story wow. of grief. And we shared this very human moment. And all of us, like, there for me, were part of this human community. And that's it. That's just it. If we stop basing everything on what's on the outside Mm -hmm. and we really look on the inside, then we see the connection. We know the connection. Because we all suffer. We all suffer. We all all joy. We all have joy. We all have moments of celebration. We all we we all have been children, Mm -hmm. you know. We all can think back on what were my dreams when I was a child. And okay, so maybe they didn't come now. Maybe they will. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I can do them now. And that's why what I really loved, one of the things we did in the HAG Project. So real quickly, if you would just speak to one of those first activities about your drawing your inner monster. Yes, and this actually comes from Linda Barry, who is wonderful. And she uh, gives this activity where you scribble. You make just a scribble. You turn the scribble into a little monster. And as you do that, you begin to just make that your own. Mm. Who is this little monster? What is it? What is it scared of? What does it say? How does it protect itself? And just playing with that and allowing it to then give you some insight into this protective part of you, right? So we develop these little monsters out of fear. But the idea of the little monster is endearing, yeah. So we're able to then hold it as this kind of more childlike broken place. And it becomes an entryway into, oh, my gosh, I've developed this little inner monster of protection. Right. Keeps people at bay. It's afraid of getting hurt. It, you know, spits and kicks if anybody <laughs> comes near it. So you start to to really work with that, and it begins this relationship that can be um, embraced yep. rather than avoided. Exactly. And you can draw many little monsters. Oh, my gosh. It's really fun to do. And begin so, to name them. Right? Yes, and name them. I loved naming them. Mm-hmm. So I hope you guys give it a try out there. And you're finding your little monsters and drawing your little monsters and naming your little monsters. Thank you again, Marianne, for being with us. And we Welcome. will be together again one more time. So here's this week's poem, which came to me as is right now. It came to me this morning. The knowing is the place of light and brings to each one true delight. Put down your books, put down your phones, and you will know you're not alone. Put down these things that let you be a part of all insanity. The balance of the world we touch is what we need to change so much. To value only what is here is living in a space of fear. The knowing takes you far and high. 
and wide and round through earth and sky. So hear the voice and love the sound that lets you know that you are found, not ever lost, not ever left. You're part of all. There is no cleft unto yourself and others here. You are the light blocked out by fear. So set, shed the skin of others' word and go inside where you are heard and sing it out to each one's soul. You are the truth that makes us whole. You are the one. You are the sky. You are the birds all flying high. You are the water, earth, and air, and you are found here everywhere. So close your eyes and be the dream of all the things that you have seen. Reality is what you know inside the place where we all grow. To love each other hand in hand, it is the shore on which we stand. Have a beautiful, wonderful, grateful week. I'll see you soon. Thank you for joining us for Home Improvement for the Soul. If you'd like more information, please go to womensoneness.com or maddiecheers.com. That's womensoneness.com or maddiecheers.com. See you on the next episode.